Greetings, everyone. I'm the host of Know Your Health. My name is Sanjeev Chopra. I'm a professor of medicine at Harvard Medical School. And today, I'm delighted to welcome Dr. Jill Grimes to be the guest. In the next 14, 15 minutes, we're going to have a conversation. Dr. Grimes is a nationally recognized media, medical media expert, award-winning author, and a family physician. Her latest book is called The Ultimate College Student Health Handbook, your guide for everything from hangovers to homesickness. So welcome, Dr. Grimes, to the Thank show. Thanks so much for having me on. Terrific. So just a handful of questions. I think the first one is, if you have a college going son or daughter and they're heading off to school, what conversation should you have the night before at dinner? <laughs> the night before. Okay, well, hopefully you've had a lot of conversations building up to this. And as the mother of two college students and the daughter of a professor, um, I'm super passionate about college. So my first thing that I would say that last night at dinner is, you know what, take advantage of every opportunity that you have in college. Do stuff that you think you wouldn't even like. Try everything, different clubs, different people, different interests and really, you know, take advantage of that setting because never again in your life will you have everything just sort of laid out like a buffet for you, like you do in college. In terms of health, um, I would at the dinner table, have them pull out their phone right then and say, let's make sure that you have a picture of the front and back of your health insurance card, if they have health insurance, because that's the number one thing that we see kids forgetting in college health centers. And the last thing I would say would be, you know, the biggest mistake that we see college students making is not seeking help early enough, whether that's help with tutoring for the classroom or whether that's for their health. Um, don't hesitate to seek help. Don't wait till you're in crisis. Terrific. What great advice. What are some of the common injuries, uh, concussion, ankle injuries? Mm -hmm. um, how should they be managed? Well, let's talk about concussion first. This is something we see all the time on college campuses and um, whether it's falling off a bike or those e-scooters um, or in intramural sports or whether someone's intoxicated and they fall and they bonk their head. Um, the first thing is to understand that a concussion is a diagnosis based on symptoms. And it's about, it's, it's a functional, not a structural injury. We've kind of tell people to think about it like a brain bruise, but really it's more that the brain circuits get shaken up. So it's not that you get a CAT scan and you go, oh, here I can see on the scan that someone has a concussion. We go on their symptoms, which are headache, irritability, any type of mood disturbance, sleeping too much, sleeping too little, nausea, vomiting, uh, difficulty with balance, or what we see the most is the brain fog where they cannot concentrate on studying or they try to study and they get a bad headache. And so if you're having any of those symptoms after a head injury, the first thing the student needs to do is to go be seen. This is for multiple reasons, not the least of which is that professors are much more understanding if a student comes to them ahead of time and says, hey, I was diagnosed with a concussion. I have to be on brain rest. I can't study. Can I get an extension on this project or delay this quiz or exam? And the other thing for us is that we wanna be able to follow your symptoms and we go through an exam and a list, a questionnaire to see how you're doing. And this is not an overnight fix. Students often wanna to be told that they can just, you know, rest for an afternoon and then their concussion's fine and they go back. The hardest thing to get, not just students, but all adults to understand is that they have to be on complete brain rest, which basically means being in bed with your eyes closed. And we start with that for 24 hours, then we have a gradual return to activities, starting with building up to a 30 minute study session. And when you can do that without getting a headache or, or other symptoms, then you can think about returning to class. And we take these things one step at a time. In my book, I have a whole um, sort of return to, to class outline in there. Not that that should be used without being seen, but just to give you more of an idea about um, how that progression goes. Terrific. And ankle injuries? 
and ankle injuries. The main thing I want parents to know is please don't ask your children to go in and get an x-ray. We have a set of rules called the Ottawa rules that we follow that tell us whether or not it's appropriate to get an injury, to, to, excuse me, to get it an x-ray for your ankle injury. We see many, 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 many ankle injuries. Kids come in and their ankle's a little swollen, um, but if they can bear weight on it right away. So the things that we look for are this. When the injury happened, if you could not bear weight enough to take four steps, that is concerning and then we might get an x-ray. Same thing if the next morning you get up and now you can't put weight on it at all, you can't walk four steps, that's an indication for an x-ray. Other than that, there's some things we do on exam, looking at the bony parts of the ankle and seeing which parts are tender to decide that. But um, the main take on there is not every ankle injury needs an x-ray, but if you can't bear weight, you gotta be seen. Terrific. Sleep is one of the most important things for all of us. Yes. And during sleep, we're now learning, we consolidate memory, mm -hmm. do amazing things that disordered sleep is related to a number of disorders, including type two diabetes. And kids are very anxious and they've got exams, they're making new friends. There's a lot of stress. Uh, give us some tips about insomnia. Okay, I'm gonna show you a picture here. See if we can get that on there, is that? Sure, good. On there, good. All right. So I'm going to talk about everything that was in that picture. So insomnia is super common and something we treat all the time. Um, you want to start with the sleep schedule. It doesn't, you know, students may stay up till 3 a.m. studying. That's okay. We don't tell them, oh my gosh, you can't stay up till 3 a.m. But if you stay up till 3 a.m., you can't get up at 7 a.m. So, you know, you need more than four hours sleep. So what we say is you want to maintain your sleep-wake schedule. So if you have Monday, Wednesday, Friday class at 8 a.m., well, sorry, you are going to be getting up at 7 a.m. or 7.30 a.m. every day, and you can take an afternoon nap. But you want to set that so that it's, an, it's a similar cycle every day. So that's number one. Number two is you address all of the senses. Let's start with smell. Dorm rooms are smelly. And sorry, this is a sexist statement, but boy dorm rooms tend to be smellier than girls. And so you want to make sure that you have, you can't light candles in dorm rooms and frequently not in apartments either, but you definitely can have diffusers or different little, um, the gel air fresheners actually work quite well and they don't add extra scent. Don't get something that's super fruity for your kid because their roommate may not like that. But you can do different just gel um, odor absorbers and so that's number one. Number two is you wanna make it dark. The easiest thing to do is to add that sleep mask that this young lady is wearing. Um, these are like $15. You can get a really comfortable one that can be thrown in the wash with the laundry once a week and that will make it dark. You wanna make it quiet or the best that you can in a dorm situation. So um, we like kids to have some noise canceling earbuds if possible, noise canceling headsets. Now you can't sleep with a big bulky one on, but they do make different headbands and things that have the Bluetooth now. And that way you can listen to a meditation app as you're going to sleep. There are many, many free, excellent meditation apps and they can listen to that and set themselves up for sleep. What we don't want them doing is being on their phone for the last hour before they go to bed. One, the blue light from the screens we know is not good, but two, even if you were using blue light glasses, um, it's that FOMO, the fear of missing out. Kids are looking at all their high school friends and you know, what do we put on Instagram and Facebook? We put our happiest moments. And so they look and they think everybody else is happy except me. And then it just, it really exacerbates that whole anxiety. So we, we ask them not, we ask them to set time during the day to do that. Literally give yourself two 10 minute breaks or two 15 minute breaks during the day and look at those things then, but don't do it when you go to bed. Um, we like fans because a fan will keep the room nice and cool and give you some extra white noise. And what am I forgetting? Weighted blanket, especially if someone is having anxiety and that's the cause of their insomnia, a weighted blanket can do wonders. It's sort of like having somebody hugging you all night long. It keeps, it, it's been shown to really improve mood and sleep quality. How much? 15 pounds if you're smaller, 20 pounds if you're bigger. It's roughly 10% of your body weight is the recommended amount. 
And last but not least, daily exercise. Getting aerobic exercise every day is critical. You don't wanna do it right before bed because that gets your body sort of hyped up and, and um, you won't be able to fall asleep, but daily exercise during the day really lowers anxiety levels. What about uh, avoiding caffeinated drinks after a certain time in the evening? I knew you would bring up coffee. That's why I purposely let that out. <laughs> yes. So the other thing is a lot of kids, all kidding aside, a lot of students you know, adopt the whole coffee habit or Red Bull or whatever caffeinated product that they're using. And um, honestly, we try and get them to, to just taper those off because um, at a minimum, keep them before noon. And again, it's sort of, you know, keep them at least eight hours before you're, you're starting to think about bed. So if, if your bedtime is midnight, um, you know, that can kind of shift a little bit, but we definitely need them to cut down on their caffeine. Great, let's take a final question. What about pot, alcohol, e-cigarettes? How common prevalent is that? And any advice you can give to the kids and to the anxious parents? Okay, so number one, I want you to hear this. A third of college students do not smoke or drink by choice. A third of college students don't smoke or drink at all. A third of them do it responsibly, although I believe that there's no amount of smoking that's responsible, but um, they, they drink responsibly. And about a third are binging on these substances. But it's key to understand that not everybody is doing it. In certain subcultures on a college campus, Every, every single person that kid knows binge drinks excessively or smokes pot every day. Um, and, and it has nothing to do with how smart um, the student is. We actually see a lot of substance abuse in the smartest kids because they are taking these hard courses and they're really stressed out and they start using this as a coping mechanism, which of course is not healthy. So I wanna tell you a, a few facts about, um, let's start with alcohol for someone suffering from a hangover. If you're getting that phone call, what can they do? Um, number one, I hope you've stocked their first aid kit with an electrolyte powder. So um, like Gatorade, Powerade, Pedialyte, any of those work, but so that they've got something in their dorm room that they can drink and sip on because they need to rehydrate. That's the biggest um, thing causing their headache. We don't want them to use straws when, when someone's already nauseous and they use a straw to sip on that electrolyte drink. They're introducing more air. It makes them more nauseous. They tend to throw up more. And last, if they are continually throwing up, they need to come into the health center and be seen most health centers have set up IVs. Let me tell you on Monday morning, it's, uh, we do a lot of IVs after football weekends in the South. Um, pot, there's a couple things I want you to know. Number one, we tell students, look, this is not your parents' pot. What do I mean by that? I mean, in the 70s, the THC, which is the psychoactive um, substance that gives the high, that concentration was one to 4%. Today, it is 15 to up to 30%. This is much, much stronger. And if you didn't grow it, you don't know what's in it. What do I mean by that? I'm not suggesting that students grow their own pot. What I'm saying is that drug dealers sell, um, illegal drug dealers, because I, I know that pot is certainly legal in about half the states now, but it is sold by weight. And so sand particles, glass particles are added to increase the weight and to increase the sale value. Also, uh, dealers know that anything that, that gives them a reputation that their drug is particularly strong is good. And so we find that they'll add LSD, which is acid or um, formaldehyde, which is not something we want in our bodies. And they add these things to get a bigger high. So you don't know what's in it. We treat an awful lot of college students who only smoked pot and they come in and then we do their urine drug screen and there's acid in it. And so this is, you know, this is not every single time, obviously. And I, I see the subset that's having trouble with it. So I see a skewed population, but let me tell you, it's really common, which was a surprise to me. And I think will be a surprise to many of you. So please be sure that your, your um, teens and college students know this. Terrific. Thank you so much, Dr. Grimes, for sharing your experience, your wisdom, uh, wonderful practical information. Thank you. Thank you. I wish the best of luck to all the college students and to their families um, who are listening to this. Terrific.